Okay, I'd like to call the Buell City Council meeting of August 16, 2022 to order. First thing on the agenda, I would like a few moments of silence in honor of Senator David Tomasoni. I think I uh, should explain why I think Buell owes a great gratitude to Senator Tomasoni. Uh, he has looked out for this town forever. And, and I'm serious about that. When he started in the 1990s, the legislator as a representative and then became a senator, um, he single-handedly fought for that school, getting, helping it uh, in some of the initial stages of getting it going and then adding things onto it, helping with the roof, things of that nature. And then after that even, when uh, Kids Peace decided to leave, uh, we were trying to get uh, a mental health for uh, children in there and um, he got us all the way down to a hearing down there that Ryan and I went down to and um, it, it just, uh, it really died from the Health and Human Services uh, chair kind of killed it uh, somewhat in committee and then uh, so it never left there anywhere. But, um, and then he kept trying to do things after that. He, he did help along with Commissioner Phillips on uh, some of the debt that we owed on that. Uh, was somewhat forgiven. But the biggest thing that he has done just recently is uh, when he was still a Democratic senator and when it was being controlled by the Republicans, uh, we didn't get uh, a grant forward going forward for our big sewer and water project. And um, Representative Sandstein tried, but she just couldn't get it through the through the committees there on the House side. He went, once again, a Democrat in a Republican Senate, got us $1.5 million. That $1.5 million takes that right off the top of what we would have had to pay over time for this project. So he put a, a $1.5 million back into this city's uh, uh, coffers, so to speak, which ultimately helped the citizens of Buell, which would have, uh, on paying uh, some of the utilities down the road, not right away. So uh, he's a fantastic, we're all going to miss him, and uh, he, he was a great man. Okay, Ryan, take the roll, please. Councilor Pastore. Here. Councilor Marcus. Yeah. Councilor Carter. Here. Councilor Lehman. Here. Mayor Clarich. Here. Okay, reports from department heads. Uh, quality flow came in today and uh, installed those new pumps and the control fan all and gave me an addition, so that's all taken care of. It took approximately about five hours today. That's everything's running good, so we're in good shape. Shouldn't have to worry about that for another 20 years, hopefully. Which is good. Uh, this, uh, last week for the kids, well, two of our kids, their summer help, and we have one more kid still next week. So be, we'll be back on the moors here pretty soon, sadly, because we have much stuff still going to want to get done before winter, which is coming faster than we would like. Uh, we're also flushing sewers this week. Uh, we're about halfway done as of today, so it should be done hopefully by Thursday, wrapping up anything we missed on Friday. Uh, our plan is we got the entrance signs, the well, uh, the Buell entrance signs that you see from the Highway 169 there, and our plans are to get those up, hopefully both of them next week. But it needs to be dry over there, so right now it's not helping us with the rain that we're currently getting. But we're still going to make an attempt for it. Get some, uh, okay, I think what they're called, you know. Yep. <laughs> That's any it. any questions from the council, Mr. Mayor? Any problem with the sewers? Probably not. Though. No, it's uh, <laughs> flushing is a lot easier now, just because you got the new pipe, so you don't have to deal with the all the joints of clay tile and stuff. So stuff doesn't get hung up as easy. So everything just flows a lot nicer before we even flush it. So everything's going good. How many days do you reserve for the flushing then? Oh, well, it takes about a week. Okay. A week. Yeah. Well, that's great. Unless we're on the browns or some <clears> things <throat> sometimes pop up and so then we just have to push it off for a little bit, but can usually get it hammered out within a week. 
Okay. And Trent is actually calling up a couple of companies that are, or like the lift station that they just repaired or changed, um, it leaks. So he's got a couple of companies he's going to get bids on. To they're going to they don't t dig up the area. They bore down, and then they inject the seal off okay. where it's leaking. And I actually just got one today, and it's for it's surprising how cheap it is. So it'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Well, fix problems, which will actually save was, money pretty quickly. I don't hear you say that too often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I talked to Joey Sop about this earlier, and uh, he said I use these these guys quite a bit, and they're good. Okay. Either one of the two, we're gonna have he's gonna have two bids for you, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the only list station we're having troubles with, right? Yeah. But the rest are. But it's nice to know in the future. Yeah. We're you know, if you to do go. come up with the problems that we have down at the Amy Edition, that's nice to know that we can solve it pretty quickly. So Ryan, we'll probably start noticing that in the CRSSD yeah. report. Two months from now, because we yeah. we have a meeting coming up there, don't we? Uh, yeah. Next week? Yeah, next Wednesday. Yeah, next week. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Have we, uh, have we noticed anything with the sewer district, the, the flows being? No. Uh, I think they're high. And, and Norm seemed to think so too after we have done that. But th there are so many factors going on. It's filtered over time. So uh, hopefully we'll get a... Uh, a base right now with this next report next Wednesday then we can compare it to the following one yeah one, one thing at the sewer district I've been everybody's dealing Chisholm's dealing we're looking at the opposite ends of spectrum comparing last year's numbers with the extreme drought to this year's numbers so it's hard to get you know an exact gauge on what's happening um, it, it just for the public with what kind of Trent and the council are talking about as far as Try we're, we're, what we're trying to do is limit INI going into the sewer system because the city is charged 50 cents for a, for every gallon or whatever that you know inflows into the sewer district. So the more we're able to reduce the INI, the more it's going to save you know the residents and the ratepayers of you all. So what's INI? Inflow. Inflow. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Inflow and infiltration. So you got inflow like the. An inflow situation that pertains to us is we had the steam lines in town mm -hmm. and a lot of like the drain filter, uh, they're not floor drains, but essentially the traps inside of uh, the steam vaults, they would flow and they'd actually go into this sanitary sewer, which is going directly into the treatment, which is unnecessary. Gotcha. And so that's part of the project that we have done throughout town eliminated those situations of inflow. Infiltration is more like your uh, cracks within clay tile uh, sewer lines and so the water just seeps in, which is another thing that we kind of try to tackle with changing up all the sewer lines that are down there. Okay. So it's, it's gotten rid of I and I, but there's still... And before there's no town in the entire globe that yeah. is zero percent. Before it used to know when it rained. <laughs> I don't know if they were if they could still tell that because we get quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically we don't want to be treating clean water. So sure. storm water runoff. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. And when are we going to fix? You can we can visually see it this spring. It was raining in there. <laughs> I was starting the event where we had about five inches at one day. Mm -hmm. It was just flowing in there. And so this, the people I'm talking to right now in order to inject this stuff, which it's to give you, the number right now is currently under $1,000. And so one storm basically pays itself off of that, eliminates the inflow essentially. So it'll be pretty huge. Like today. <laughs> it's today. Well, no, this, is, this week. Bad. This week is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Trent? If not, let's move on to Citizens Forum. I don't think anyone signed up. So let's move on to number six. Council additions to the agenda. I have one that was in front of you, councillors. It's to award bids, uh, bids for miscellaneous street projects. I'm going to uh, have that as A1. It's right after the construction and progress update from John so that he can answer any questions we might have about that. So that would be A1. 
So with that, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended with that 1A1 addition? So um, move. Moved by Carol. Is there support? No support. Support by Stewart. Further comment or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. The agenda is adopted. Okay. Number seven, consent agenda. A, minutes, regular city council meeting, August 2nd, 2022. B, claims, payroll. Number 14, $15,487.34. Accounts payable, $80,028.05. For a total of $95,515.39. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Also moved. Moved by John. Is there support? I'll support. Support by Brandon. Further comment or discussion or question of anything? Ryan, is that what a light pole costs? Under which one? West Coast Distribution Incorporated. That one was uh, for the accidents. It was an insurance claim. Oh, okay. So that was... Uh, from this winter. Yeah. And, that one and, on Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and insurance did cover our expenses yeah. for that. So. I was just curious, I, I had no idea how much they cost. Oh, they're, they're, cheap. they're cheaper when you buy more, when you're just buying a single one. With yeah, more. I would imagine, usually. Do we have extras? Yep, because that one was insurance, that's why it was done single. That's all I had. Okay, anyone else? Okay, if not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. Move on to eight business. And we'll go with the construction uh, update. And then, John, you can move right into A1 right after that. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know when we've finished up the update, though. Uh, welcome, John. <laughs> yeah, just an update on the uh, capital improvement project. You know, Casper is still working on the punch list. I think a lot of it's been taken care of. Uh, a few miscellaneous things sought here. Uh, some adjustments to some uh, curb stuff, or not curb stuff, some uh, tracer wire boxes, things like that. So got a lot of it taken care of. The other part in addition, I haven't really got over there to finish a lot of the seating restoration at that area. So I've been on Casper to uh, get that taken care of also. And the other thing, back to the CIP is that Alley F. I talked to Tom at uh, Casper. They expect to be in there in about a week and a half to get that last piece of uh, uh, that Alley F is where the steam line needs to be removed and uh, and the water line finished. So we'll still on the schedule to get that completed. Memorial edition. You're talking about yeah. that now. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's. Yeah, east of Roberts, south of uh, Pennsylvania, yeah. north of Woodridge, there's an alley back there. Okay. Yeah. And in the Capitol Church. Yeah. <coughs> so, how far does that run up then? Well, it's only about 120 feet left to do it. So, there's just a few couple residences yeah. right there that'll be. Okay. Yeah. What happened was the way the steam line is over on the side of the alley, but for some reason it jogged in the middle of the alley. The only way to get the water line which was below the steam line, is to remove it. Okay. So it was a little expensive change order, but it was approved by the USDA and got it all ready to go. Ryan, have you received many um, individual complaints from people if they weren't happy with something uh, bordering their property? Or do you think we've cleaned all those up? Yeah, I think for the majority we've gotten okay. cleaned up. I mean, there's a few restoration areas that we're still working on, but I think overall most of the things are buttoned up. Well, the public, if they have a concern, they better do it pretty quick because this project is going to come to completion pretty quick. Yeah, I know. And, you know, a lot of the things, I mean, especially in the alleys with the amount of rain, a lot of that is, you know, the city's going to have to bring in a little bit more fill, and I mean, that's just what you're going to run into with having you know, the gravel dirt alleys and so on. So team vet, uh, business, yeah, business yeah. as usual. Right, Trent? Yeah, that's something, guys. Okay. 
Okay, if, if that's it for the uh, construction project update, do you, do you want to move into A1, the uh, award the street project bids? And Ryan, do you want to just highlight that first, and then John will direct questions at you? Yeah, so so this is, like we've talked about before, combining some of these miscellaneous um, projects, such as um, that last block of Woodbridge that we've talked about, the wear course over on Clinks Way, which is a block over from from Woodbridge, um, Jefferson Street, um, basically extending from Roberts, straightening that out, widening that a little bit, making that a little safer. Um, and that culvert, kind of big bump down by the bank on Seville Avenue along with the pavement and the road, finishing up the road for the new development. Um, that we're kind of going back and forth on, you know, what's going to make the most sense financially. And then going with engineer Jamnick, we decided to kind of put all this together and put it out for bid. And I was fairly happy with where things came, came in on, um, you know, overall, when you look at the main project, we're about a hundred thousand dollar under budget, which was, you know, a good, a good thing for us. And we still have about 250,000 remaining in, in contingency and we're well below the amount of loan that we're going to take out for the USDA by about 700,000 at this point. So I just kind of did a quick breakdown relative cost of this is 457,000. We have 213,000 that's set aside in a city infrastructure that we been saving for years that we we'd recommend using for this project along with grant from from the IRRR for the new development and plus and basically adding one hundred and forty six thousand six hundred dollars onto our USD USDA loan. It won't have any impact on utility rates or the upcoming levy. Um, like I said, we did all our homework prior to and you know the rates were in a good position to handle this you know, kind of minuscule little project to you know take care of some areas that have been neglected for a long time so it's a good it's a good project in my mind and engineer jam that can talk about the bids and give his recommendation yeah so this morning we took uh bids for four bidders too easy incorporated which is a Doing business as Joe and Soft was a bull bidder, $286,130. The second bid was KGM, $287,000 and $108,000. So the bids were within $1,000. So we checked all the math and everything, and the low bidder was um, too easy. It's just doing business. And then you had the other two bidders were a little bit higher, Euler Brothers and Casper. So. And like Ryan mentioned, the base bid is the Franklin Burnett Edition Road. And the yeah, ad alters, like Ryan mentioned. And just one more comment on Jefferson Street, you know, where the two highways, the old highway comes through town, there's that kind of big hump. We're going to level that. I'll take that big hump out of there, right by where the sign is, and every little retaining wall level all that off. So that's part of the Jefferson. Are we going to tie into the new? Section of Robertson. Yeah, go all the way down to that. Just over the, to the alley about. Yep. Yeah, okay. So we, we would recommend if the city council would uh, was going to award the project before it's a too easy incorporated with business to show the stock for $286,130, and you could choose to do the ad alternate. When we do bids like this, we the base bid is the basis of awards, so that's okay. That's what I thought. Know, we don't add the two and start comparing the two, and I know the bids were really close and they had alternates, but the whole bidder was still in top. I'll make a motion. Motion by Stuart. Is there support? Support. Support okay. by John. Um, yeah, that seems odd, but it's the base bid is what dictates. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I have a couple of questions. If sure, I go ahead. Yes. Um, so on that bid, Ryan, from Too Easy Incorporated, base bid Franklin and Burnett. Burnett is the new addition? Correct. Okay. And Franklin is straightening Franklin Street. Yeah. Too long. Right, right by the park there. Yeah. That's it. And the cost of that is listed there. Yeah. What portion of that is for Burnett edition? 
Well, I mean, it's all, it's all, all kind of combined it's all into one. one. So now back to the funding that we received for that, that addition. Does that cover that? Yeah. There's no, no addition to them cost through any of this? No. Okay. The other question I had was, we're gonna be increasing our USDA loan amount by 146,000. Correct. Do you know the total of all for the USDA? About, about 3 million, 140,000. Three. Yeah, because we're right, we're right just above 3 million on our total USDA loan water and sewer. Okay. We were approved up to like 3.76. Okay. That's all I got. Okay, anyone else with any questions? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> motion is carried. Okay, now we'll move on. Thank you, John. Uh, before you uh, take off, though, John, and uh, they're going to try to get this done before October sometime. Yeah, if possible. The award, uh, and I just what the award was the base pin and the ad alternate. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was award, and we talked to the contractor. We'll get a construction meeting, pre-construction meeting next week with them. Perfect. And get a schedule. Okay. And you can update us then a couple more weeks after that. So that's going to be done before fall. <clears throat> Yes, that yeah. that's the plan. Oh, the plan. If the if this these improvements are going to be done before fall. Yes. Yeah. And the way we set it up, the base bid are all paving with the base course would be done this year. All the wearing course for all the projects would be done next next year. Okay. So we have to first lift the bituminous this stuff. Well, Trent on that bid on that. Boring or doing that patching over there, you don't need a another bid if it's thousands of dollars. Three intersections? Oh, you know, you can just. Oh, you're talking no, about back, yeah, back, back to the way stations. I mean, you can just call your guy and get it done for that amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are we done? Okay, B, Canvas of 2022 primary election results. Ryan, lead us through. Just basically, it's the, the city council asked, it acts as the canvassing board for the city of Buell because the city had a primary election for council. You can see on the second page are the results certified by the Secretary of State's office and just looking for a motion to approve those results. Do we have a motion? All motion. Is there support? All support. Further comment, question, or discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. We have uh, 598 registered voters. Correct. How many turned out, you know? I believe our total count was 251 voted at the polls, and I believe we had 35 <coughs> vote absentee. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor of... Uh, Approving the primary election results, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. Okay, C, FYI 2023 budget schedule. Okay, Ryan, once again, will you lead us through, please? So as, our, as the city um, starts its budgeting process, we are required to, the council is required to approve, and we are required to post our budget schedule. Um, you can kind of see Diana outlined uh, the budget meetings will start on October 18th and conclude with um, the Truth and Taxation public meeting on December 6th followed by our certification of the levy and budget by December 20th. So this is just kind of a formality that we need to approve um, and post our budget schedule. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Support by Carol. Any comments or questions for Ryan concerning this? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. 
Okay, bear with me while we get to the next page. Uh, the next one is uh, the rec board requesting $100 in funds. Uh, and Mr. Towner was in talking to us earlier that it, is it still for food and beverages or was it maybe for prizes? Uh, probably prizes. Prizes. So just so we're approving $100 for the committee to use on that. So, is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Brandon. Is there support? Support. Oh, go ahead, Carol. Support by Carol. Uh, further comment or question of uh, Ryan? What's the date for the meal blast? The uh, 23rd uh, from 3 to 5. Thank you. That's next what? Next Tuesday. Okay. Okay, do we... Is there, do we have the motion in support? Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. Let's go on to E, Salvation Army, Army Heat Share Agreement. Ryan, will you just walk us through that again? Yeah. This is a, an agreement that the city does each year with the Salvation Army. Basically, it's, um, you know, a lot allows us to pass on um, information that and aid and things that they they offer. Um, you know, we posted in our newsletter, we put it on the utility bills that there's funds available. It also allows the city to kind of coordinate should someone need or receive assistance from the Salvation Army. So, you know, pretty simple and straightforward. They're not the only group that can also assist people. No, but we keep advertising when it when it comes due to us and we pass it on. Yeah, AEOA is another big one that residents take advantage of and things like that. So it's just when everybody's on the same page, it's you know kind of peace of mind, especially for the the ratepayer should, should they need the assistance and just kind of streamlines the process of making sure. Okay. Money goes where it's the most needed. Is there a motion to approve the Salvation Army Heat Share Agreement? I make a motion. Motion by Stuart. Is there support? Support. Support by Carol. Any further questions for Ryan or any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. Now let's move on to... If that was a motion, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a resolution 22-29, Habitat for Humanity. And once again, Ryan, do you want to just uh, lead us into that for discussion purposes? Sure. As I'm sure everybody is aware, um, Habitat has begun their two houses um, over on State Street. They really like um, working in Buell, and we've been kind of going back and forth, and they'd really like to you know, put a few more homes up in Buell, which is, you know, it addresses the housing crisis that's going along in St. Louis County. It's good for the city with tax base, utility customers. It fills up these empty lots that we have down down there. Um, I kind of been coordinating between Habitat and the First National Bank of Buell. So, and the, the bank is, is gonna donate basically 50 feet or two parcels down there. So Habitat's able to build two houses right next to each other like they're doing right now like i said i it's it's a really a win-win for the city and you know those who are taking advantage of this and you know filling up our streets and empty lots so these next res the resolutions are just kind of the standard transfer of the parcels to habitat basically the bank's lots are the drive-through area correct I'm on the CDBG, Community Development Block Grant, and, and they come for funding every year. And th this is a little bit unique that they, they are partnering that much with a city. Normally they, they spread around, so they found something they like here. And, and, and that, that, that's a testament to, to the city, to the, to the people of, of Buell. So I, 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 I'm all in favor of that. I'm just uh, stating my, my opinion on that. And, uh, I think that's great. That's kind of dead land there that uh, now we'll have housing and uh, increase the residents. I'm going to be talking about that in Mayor's comments a little bit more, but uh, uh, just I wanted to let you know that, that that's like the city should feel honored that they're approaching us for what evidently is going to be five homes, Brian? Five in total. They have okay. another request. We've been talking a lot that beat up homes kind of across the alley from where they're building right now. And that's a, but that's a beta. Correct. Okay. 
Okay, comments for Ryan or questions or concerns? I'll make a motion on it. Well, okay, ahead of me. Okay, there's a motion yes, by Stuart, support by John. Right. Still a comment. <laughs> so when are these proposed to be built, Ryan? Because in your resolution it says 24, but in this letter it says 25. So, I mean, are we gonna be sitting on this? Well, the, the, they'll be built, the two down by the bank would be built in 24, and I believe the third should be to decide to transfer that partial would be planned for 25. So they're looking at 2023 is finishing up the two that they're doing. The two that they're doing will be done this year. Their next year's build uh, building schedule is full, so they'd be looking at 2024 to start this. So. Um, I know the last time we went over the other two lots, we made a contingency where they had to have homes built, similar to what every other lot we sell in town. Is there any contingency with this where there has to be a home built by a certain time? I think they've outlined their schedule and, I mean, habitats look at what they're doing. I mean, I don't think we need any, if they're, we're, you know, transferring land to them, they're going to use it. We're accepting their schedules, what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay. Which is full for next year, so we're not coming next year, it's that following year. Yeah. And I would assume that we wanted all that done wrapped up in the one year. That yeah. Good point. How about zoning? Is that an issue with that? No, that, that area has been used for mixed use for the past 15 years. I don't have to hold a public hearing for rezoning or nothing? Not that I see. Well, that side there actually was a boarding house there. Right. So yeah, was, and there was a house on the end where Homer Violet lived. So yeah. yes. that's still residential. And Hills had there. Yes. Basically, the main site is, has been residential. Um, where the bank parking lot is, there was an old drugstore there. but And across the street, well, the Gundy's land is... Well, there's Moose Club and... Right, that but that would be commercial, commercial at, at well, that time. Right. But now it's changed. is mixed because there's a apartment right. on, on top yes. there. Yes, yeah. I thought we approved uh, the, 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 the zoning map just this last year. And I think that was multi-use, if I remember. Yeah, I'll have to double check, but yeah, I believe you're right. So my only other concern is that those lots are gonna sit there for a period of time. Um, no, I'm all for Habitat for Humanity, but in my mind, those lots are the cities, which is ultimately the taxpayers of the town. Um, should that not be offered to the people of town before giving them away if, if somebody in town wanted to build a home there? I mean, they've been sitting vacant for 25 and years. And they haven't been listed for sale, though. It's I, hard I, for people to know that without knowing that. I don't think know. anybody's rushed up here to ask. Is that, a, is that common knowledge to know, to go ask a city for property? I don't, I don't. Most people do. We, we've had that. Just listed on our sign out front by the highway that there's lots available. Yeah. Good point, Stuart. Yeah, we've had no interest in any of those lots down there. So it's kind maybe. of undesirable lots to build on. Well, any exactly. Way. You got the bike trail, the boat landing. I wouldn't mind that in there. You got the power plant behind. Just yes, what you do. got. Yeah. And you got the bank that's sitting. Yeah. <laughs> Good I heard, answer. I heard, I heard rumor. <laughs> Something will be done with that. But I just think it should be offered to the people of the town before giving it away. That's my opinion. Well, we've got somebody that's going to buy it that might not buy it if we don't if we don't uh, do consummate this deal now because they have a list a mile off from this oh, town's yeah. offering land. So I, I'm all in favor of that. So, I, well, is they're doing just what you said? The yeah. land was there. They're offering a, a solution to use the land, and mm. nobody else came for it before them. Well, it's common practice for them to approach towns. I mean, the average everyday citizen. Well, I know, but just what you said, they're doing. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? It's within the two-year window also that we always we put on our other lots. So, so I, I think it's a win-win. 
Do we have a motion? We have a motion and support, and okay. it is a resolution, so it will be a roll call. Okay, further comments? None. Hearing nothing, uh, Ryan, would you take the roll, please? Councilor Pastori? Yes. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Carter? No. Councilor Lehman? Yes. Mayor Clarich? Yes. Uh, resolution passes. Then the second resolution basically allows um, me to execute the required documents. So. You're on F now, right? Correct. G. G. Or G, G. excuse G. me. Oh, yeah. yeah we did I F. forgot to cross one off. Okay. So, resolution 22 30, Habitat Free Man. Is there a motion to approve that? For Still moved. Moved by Carol. Is there a support? Support. Support by John. Further comment, question, discussion? Hearing none, Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Pastore? Yes. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Carter? No. Councilor Lehman? Yes. Mayor Clarich? Yes. Well, the second resolution is not even our land. Why are you voting no? It's the well, bank is voting in that land. So no, we, this, they're both our yeah, land. Yeah, why would we have a resolution for the bank's property? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah, it's, we're fine. Okay. Next, uh, we now come to counselors' comments. Stuart, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I have really nothing. We haven't had a Rams game last month or this month. We're taking a summer break. Um, we didn't have the fire department meeting this month because of the town hall. So we'll have it next month. That's about it. Okay, Brandon. Um, I would just like to say thank you and congratulations to our candidates for our election. That was great. It's good to see all the participation and the people getting involved. That's all. Okay. okay. John. Well, I'd like to thank the county for <laughs> doing all those rats coming into town on the <laughs> entrances. They came in and they patched their, uh, oh. there were some bad spots there. Um, and the city crew has cleaned up our, our, our signs coming into town because they're going to redo them. So I put a lot of time there and it looks, it's going to look out good. Well, other than that. That's it? Okay. Carol. John just said what I was going to thank the guy, uh, Trent, and all of them for really helping yeah. the entry. The Memorial Garden, the Senior Center, they've done a lot for us. Okay. Yes. We didn't have the manpower. We don't get the volunteers. <laughs> so if you're bored, we'd gladly have you. <laughs> Anything it. else? Just to add, the, the group of summer kids that we had this year did a very good job. I know they're... They're done pretty quick, but um, Ben, Grace, um, and Nathan, Nate, um, were phenomenal. So I don't think I've had one complaint about any of them, which you usually get a few, but they've been, and I'm sure Trent can agree with that, but they've been, they've been very good. Well, they're evidently coming on time. You haven't sent any home yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you haven't sent any home yet. <laughs> okay, with that, I'll go into Mayor's comments. I'm um, Earlier in this meeting, the council adopted our budget meeting schedule. So this is just a reminder for the council of, of what that bu budget meeting schedule means, but then also for the public so that they, they can pick up from that and, and go from that, those that are listening. So... Um, I wanted to highlight the work that goes into the preparation of the budget and also the multiple factors that must be taken into account before a decision is made on Buell's final budget and subsequent tax levy. So remember this budget sets up our tax levy which impacts individual taxes and business taxes. So I just, uh, that's why this is so important and that's why we are required by law to hold these meetings so you can have public input, they can ask questions and, and uh, follow 
whatever the law is, and then we have certain laws we have to follow. State law requires that municipalities approve a balanced budget, meaning that planning and preparation is essential and mandatory for city operations. The city's budget is comprised of 27 different departments. Each department is then broken down into multiple line items that include everything from wages and benefits to fuel and utilities and everything in between. After the breakdown of each individual department, the city then takes into account the revenues that will be generated for the upcoming year. The main source of rev revenue for municipalities is local government aid, otherwise known as LGA, and it's followed by grants and other miscellaneous revenues such as mining effects dollars, small city as, uh, assist funds, and state fire aid, etc. From there, the property tax levy is determined by the differences between the cost of the department operations and the revenues. During the budget meetings, it is the council's responsibility to determine what the priorities are for the city and then how much to levy onto the taxpayers for other services and amenities. From my perspective, providing essential services such as fire, EMS, law enforcement, and snow plowing are my top priorities. As we all know, providing these services come at a cost and almost certainly will require adjustments to our levy and budget to do so. The only way to, to continue to provide these essential services and expand in other areas is to increase our tax base, which we are trying to do right now by approving those lots. The simple fact is that without growth, the city would not be able to maintain its current level of services or even, cons or even consider investments in other areas. Grant resources today do not cover 100% of a project like they once did and they're extremely competitive so the options we are left with are to grow our tax base and raise property taxes exponentially on the people of Buell and one thing that, that's really affecting us now uh, as you've seen in the news that North Shore mining is down mm -hmm. and it's going to stay down you're hearing all kinds of rumblings about hipping taconite um, the dollars that the IRRB gets is based on a tonnage. They get X amount of dollars. It's on a three-year average. So we'll be okay for a couple of years. But when this year that we're coming up with right now becomes the first year of something and if things don't improve that means there's less IRRB money to go around for a lot of projects and the IRRB has been very very good to Iron Range communities and especially this town so I, I can't thank Commissioner Phillips and, and the legislators that serve on that so with that I'm done is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stewart is there support? Support. Support by Carol. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed same sign. Motion carried Meeting adjourned. Thank you. At 7 12.